forget because, you know, guys, I will forget. Uh, Susan won't be joining us today. She is speaking at a conference in Miami. And although we're in the same state of Florida, Miami is still about four and a half to five hours away. So just dropping by for a chat or a cup of coffee is quite a prospect. So um, she is going to be actually landing, I think, today. And no, this is way off. Let me fix my camera. All right, it's still a little off. I think I can fix that, make some adjustments here. But uh, yeah, Susan is landing today. I think she was going to try and find a spot in the airport, but I don't think that's really going to be easy for her to do. So it's just me today, and we're going to be making pork because I think most people are probably just a little tired of turkey right now, and uh, pork would be a nice break from it. But we're not just going to make it too easy. You're going to be doing some grocery shopping. I know I miss Susan, too. Uh, it's hard to do a show without her. I've gotten so used to having her around. And, you know, she really does make my job a lot easier with her questions and comments. And she keeps things rolling. She is the best co-host. And I told her I miss her dearly when she's not here. Because for one thing, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Hey there, how you doing? It's great to see you here. Uh, I'm glad everybody is here and anybody wants to come in. I have an open seat and you can uh, keep me company while I'm cooking and talking and ask some questions. Feel free. So we're going to get started. I have started the recording and today we're going to make a pork loin and a pork loin is pretty easy to cook and you could almost do this in one pan, but I, I'm going to, I want to keep the sauce a little separate. I want to keep the integrity of the pork, um, undiluted. And I, I want to keep the appearance a little better. So I'm not going to make this a skillet dinner. I'm going to uh, make this a little separate. And this is something you can actually do ahead of time. So it's, it's a good prep ahead meal, which is always a plus. All right. So actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to season up my pork loin. So just turn my pan on because I want to toast some pecans. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to salt and pepper these loins. And I'm just going to set them aside for a few minutes. Hit them on both sides. Because these are going to saute directly. Actually, I may just do one right now. Save the other one. But, you know, it's still okay to season them. It's not no harm. A lot of pepper. And this is a place where cracked pepper would be really good, too. And I thought I had some, but I do not. So I'm actually going to put on a little bit of a blackened seasoning. You could just use paprika if you don't want any heat. And I'm doing it just to get a little color on it when I saute them. I'm also going to hit them with just a little bit of flour, too, when I go to saute them to make a little bit of crust. So we're just going to leave these here. Let's move these to the side for a minute. Give myself a little room. All right. So now I'm going to make a sauce to go with this and it's going to be pretty simple and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to toast some pecans i do use sea salt peggy yeah it's all i pretty much have well actually i have some kosher salt in the house now too uh, but sea salt is pretty much all i use and you know you can use some really cool um, uh, himalayan sea salt some pink sea salt hey nazim you want to pop in come on in uh, oh, that's okay. Don't worry about the question. I don't, you know me, I don't see him half the time anyway. Anybody wants to join, you know, come on in. I am Chef Dennis, and we're making a uh, pork tenderloin with a fruit and um, nut sauce. Actually, the, the original recipe I saw was a chutney, and I, I didn't want to go through all the trouble of making a chutney. So I thought this would really be just as nice and take it in a little bit of a different direction. Uh, I've got some Chinese uh, sweet chili sauce or Asian sweet chili sauce could be any any nationalities you like, but I'm going to build a sauce with that. So the first thing I'm doing, like I said, is I'm just going to toast these pecans a little bit and they're just plain. I'm just got them in the pan. I just want to heat them up a little bit and get some of the natural oils cooking. 
uh, in them so they, they get some more flavor burst from it. So, and then anyone who would please like to tell a little bird, I would appreciate it. Let them know we're here and we are cooking. We're around the kitchen table, even though we're without Susan today. So, all right, so they are toasting up pretty good. You can't see it, but there's a little bit of a color going on. I'm going back in the pan. And that is done. I'm going to move this off to the side. And we are going to start making our sauce. The first thing I'm going to do is turn this down a little bit. Now I'm going to use butter for this. You could use oil. But I just want to go with a little butter today. I'm going to let that heat up. This is going to be a really quick sauce to make. And you could use this sauce for a variety of things. And right now, I've got some pineapple while that's melting. And I just want to cut that pineapple up a little bit. And this, is, this is fresh pineapple. I actually had some left over. And, you know, a lot of times I look in the refrigerator to see what I have on hand before I start cooking. And I, I looked in there yesterday, and I saw, because I didn't put this up till yesterday, and I saw what I had. I know I have, I almost always have pineapple on hand. I've got some great fresh Florida tangerines. They're in season here. I have some cranberries left over from Thanksgiving. And I actually had some sweet chili sauce in the refrigerator. So it, it's, it's going to be nice. It's going to be flavorful. So the first thing I do, let's go back to the pan. Let's bring Nazim in here. Hey, Nazim. Hey, Chef. Thanks for joining. Still in the office uh, waiting on some final things to close off the day, but this is looking awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's about combining flavors. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a fusion when you want to stop and think about it. I never really say I am a fusion cook, but I, I do enjoy mixing. Oh, hello. Whoa. <laughs> Always, I'm glad I wasn't under it when I opened it. <laughs> Peggy, this is sweet chili sauce. There you go. And you can find that in just about any Asian section of the grocery store. Now, is this is this something that you put together on the spur of the moment, or you've done this before? This I've morning? never done this before. Okay. Uh, you know, I've used all the ingredients before, so I figure I had the technology. Okay. So I, I did have in mind a specific, and it was a chutney, and it was made with orange juice and vinegar and sugar and you cooked it down and then put the fruit in it and made the chutney and I'm thinking well you know hell that's that's more time in the kitchen this is something that's going to be easy and it's something that you could do ahead of time and it, it's really a quick a quicker way to make a sauce for your pork I think it's going to look really colorful it's going to be really flavorful so all I'm doing is I'm just giving this pineapple a quick saute Right. I'm putting in some tangerine segments, and this was one little tangerine. I'll tell you what I do need I don't have is a little bit of zest. So let's just put a little bit of zest in here. Hmm. Oh, that smells so good. Nothing is better than tangerine. Oh, the aroma of a tangerine is just like one of the best things in the world. And you're, and you're in Florida, Chef. Let's remind everybody. <laughs> know that. Okay, so I've got that going in here. I'm going to pop in some cranberries because I happen to have them. But, you know, you could leave the cranberries out. But this is going to be a little bit about color today. So here is the basic for the sauce. I've got some pecans. I've toasted. I'm going to hold a few off. I'm going to throw some pecans in here now. All right, so I've got a little bit of texture. And, you know, you could do this with other fruit. If you have mango on hand, uh, if you want to use lime, if you want to use um, apple, you know, you could really run the gamut with what you're going to do here. So that's done. That's really all there is. And now I'm going to add in this beautiful chili sauce. sauce. Now, how, how spicy is this going to get? It's not real hot. It 
It really okay. is. It's, it's by no means uh, super spicy. And I'm going to put a little bit more chili sauce in there because I made more of this relish than I thought. Uh, it really is, um, when it says sweet chili sauce, it is. It's going to have a little bit of tang to it, but it's not going to be crazy. So that's basically it. Now, the only thing I'm missing in this would be maybe some, uh, if I had some green onions, chop off the tips, or some parsley, just to give it a little green color. And I wouldn't do that until I was ready. So I'm just going to get this out of the heat because I don't want to cook it anymore. Oh, okay. Put it aside because that's basically done. Okay. And now we're going to make our pork. And the pork is really simple to do, too. Oh, that smells so good. Let me tell you, this is just the, the aroma. Oh. You know, this is more like almost like a sweet and sour sauce. Gotcha. Mm. And if you want to get oranges, I don't think that one had a seed or I ate it, one of the two. But you can get those little halos that don't have seeds. Those little oranges uh, segments, or you can very easily just kind of pull the seed out of it. So here, pan is getting hot. Put a little oil in it. And then I'm going to take one of those pork tenderloins that I seasoned at the beginning of the show. And I'm just going to cut it in half because it's a little big, and it'll also help with the cooking. And the only thing I'm going to do now before I throw it in the pan I'm just going to put a little flour on it. Okay. Because uh, I want to make just a little bit of a skin on it, and the flour is going to help it. And if you want to trim any of this excess fat off, you can do that as well. You know, I, I'm leaving it on, and I'm going to hit it just a little bit more Cajun seasoning, blackened seasoning. And, again, this could be any kind of spice you like. If you don't want any more heat, uh, use some sweet paprika or some smoked paprika in it. Just, and again, it's mostly for color, but you know, I'm gonna get some flavor off of this too. So now that my pan is getting hot. I love that little portable, what is it, induction or it's something? An induction cooker, and it is just amazing. And, and you know, <laughs> if you don't do this kind of cooking, having an extra burner around the house is a great thing. You know, it really adds, so say I wanna do a buffet, you know, I throw this burner on, I can put a pot on it with soup or with an entree. So you know, think about what you have on hand. Most people have slow cookers. Most people can use, you know, you can use those to serve buffet items in. But if you have one of these, the only thing with, with an induction cooker is you do need to have um, magnetic pans, tripod pans. Okay. So, and I finally okay. learned the hard way. Cause just, you just take a magnet with you when you go shopping for a pan. And if gotcha. it sticks to it. It works. Or cast iron is really good for that. So you can't do any Teflon on that? You can if okay. it's uh, if it's a tri-fi pan underneath. They're making okay. gotcha. in all kinds of gotcha. pans these days. Although, you know, I rarely use Teflon. I'm not an advocate of that. Okay. I know the early testing of that, you know, when it gets to a, a high enough heat, it produces uh, some kind of toxic oh, great. substance. <laughs> so, you know, I, I do have one, and it's only for eggs. Gotcha. And that's that's what I use it for. And, and it never gets that hot when I scramble eggs. In fact, you know, my secret to scrambling eggs is to get the pan a little hot with some butter in it, put the eggs and stir it around, then turn off the stove and let them finish cooking slowly so they don't get hard and, and nasty. So, uh, this is a Burton, a Max Burton induction cooker. And the pans are called Duck's Top. And they are amazing pans, not very expensive. Uh, they don't sell a lot of things. And I've only been able to find them on Amazon. But this is a real heavy, good quality uh, saute pan. I have some smaller pans that they make too. In fact, my niece was just asking me about what to buy. And they have like a small 14 piece set, which is great for, when I look at it, it's, it's like that's all they put in it. But for a normal cook, that's plenty of pans. So, yeah, and, and Peggy, you don't need one of those super, they make these super induction cookers, too. You don't need them. 
the regular induction cooker is fine. I think mine was about eighty dollars. And that looks that looks really portable, by the way. It is. You know, it's, uh, one of my friends wants me to do a demo on how I set up, and right. she was trying to find a kitchen. And I said, "You don't need a kitchen. Just give me a plug." I says, "I'll bring my induction cooker." That's awesome. So now I'm getting a little bit of heat and color, so you can see where the flour helped get some color, and the um, Cajun spice, the blackened spice, helped get some color too. And I'm just seasoning the outside of this. You know, it's not like we're going to get crazy with the whole thing. So the outside is going to be a little bit flavored, and the inside is still going to be nice and tender and moist and, you know, not over seasoned. So what we're going to do here is pan saute it, and it's not going to take a long time to finish this pork in the saute pan like this. You can pretty much give it maybe about 12 minutes in that range because it is a thin piece of meat. You can also do it to this stage where it's got a nice coating on it. It's seared on the outside. Now you might want to take this in where it's still a little bit red and just hold it down in the pan and sear it closed. All right, so then we get rid of that red. It's a nice color in it. And seasonings and then at this point you could take it and you could take it out of the pan you could turn the pan off and you could save it to finish later so let's say you know you want to do this ahead of time you know you have a few minutes uh, in the morning or in the afternoon if you're not working finish it cool it down put it in the refrigerator you got your sauce done now dinner time comes you can put it back in the oven for about 15 minutes let it finish cooking uh, or you can just put it back in a saute pan. So actually what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to leave this right there because Lisa will be home tonight about 3 o'clock and dinner's going to be about 5. So we're going to let that sit. But let me just show you. What you're going to get. Okay, say we went to serve this. And let's say this is done. And I wanted to do it like kind of family style. Now we've got this beautiful sauce, this chutney for lack of a better term, with pineapple and cranberries and pecans and mandarin oranges, tangerines. And I'm going to serve it with this beautiful sauce. I'm going to make some roasted potatoes to go with it. Oh, man. Okay. And I'm going to hit this, and I'm going to go out because I forgot to get it. I'm going to get some parsley, chop it up, and dress it up a little bit because presentation is important when you eat. And even if you're just feeding yourself and your family, remember, you know, that little bit of extra, chopping up a little bit of fresh parsley and hitting with it. And you can chop it up and keep it in the refrigerator for about three days if you keep it covered. So, you know, you can use that garnish or cilantro or some fresh thyme or just a fresh herb. You know, sometimes I don't have them and I don't have a chance to go. I will take romaine and I'll take the dark outer leaves of the romaine and I'll chop that up real fine just to get a little green, just to get a little splash of something. Right, right. But you have this flavor with the chili sauce and you could almost eat this just with a spoon. <laughs> what I'm doing. The funny the thing is you guys eat eight eight on the right hand side, side here and we also got um, Jordy and if he says it's dinner time, this is, this is a perfect blab. <laughs> Like I'm telling you now, if you like to eat pork rare, oh. you know, pork is safe to eat, not well done now. This is probably a little too rare. Okay. You can still let it be a little pink. It's, you know, they've stopped feeding pigs garbage. So that was the big thing on eating rare pork. So pork is nice to serve and you, you don't want to let it overcook because you're going to ruin it. So you want to have it just either done or a little bit rare. At Lisa's case, I have I can't have any pink in it at all. She won't touch it. But Betty's got the same problem. Yeah, it has to be like cooked to the extreme. Sometimes, which is fine. Yeah, but, you know, you could. This is done. I mean, serve a little green vegetable with this, even too. Actually, I think I have some Brussels sprouts in there that that are calling me. Uh, I try to always have green beans in the house because we're kind of one of these selective families where we don't eat a lot of different vegetables. 
and uh, fresh corn is always on them whenever I can get that. And in, in Florida, we have it almost year round. I know. Uh, That's but, one of the things I miss here in Italy is that we do not have fresh corn on the cob. They don't. They don't just do not sell it at all. You guys do a lot more greens, though. You have yeah. a lot of different kinds of greens. That's and true. Greens are wonderful. I know. Uh, I mean, I love, and this would go great. Now think about balance and color. You know, right now we have, you know, I have leftover cranberries in there too, but these are ones that I candied. Um, but you could have thrown in just a few regular cranberries too, just for color. Even if you don't always eat them, it's good for color. But I mean, this is just a beautiful sauce. The pork looks really nice. Let me pick it up a little closer. It looks great. <laughs> The wrong way. No, correct. That center right there looks great. Yeah. But I mean, the, if you could see it and you could smell it and that chili sauce, like I said, it's just you go in the Asian aisles and it's a no brainer. I mean, it works with chicken. It, it's a natural sauce to use with citrus or sweet fruit, pineapple, peaches, mangoes. Uh, I just bought some kumquats, so I'm anxious to try them. Fresh Florida kumquats. Uh, I was going to throw some of them in there, but I figure they're harder for people to find. But, you know, there's there's all kinds of things and be inventive, be creative. This would be fine with chicken. OK, if you don't eat pork, this would be excellent with fish. OK, so there's all kinds of ways. Think outside the box. Like I said I looked in here to see pretty much what I had. So if you if you have fruit on hand, think in those terms. If you don't have a sweet chili sauce, you know, you could still make a little sauce out of it. You could puree a little bit of fruit if you have anything on hand, or you could add a little bit of, uh, hit it with a little white wine and a little stock, and then you thicken it up by rolling butter and flour, you know, to thicken the sauce up, or a little cornstarch. Cornstarch will give you the same look that this chili sauce did. You know, you just have Excellent. to be careful when you add in. But, I mean, this is it. Who needs corn if you can have broccoli? You know, I wish we could have broccoli more often, but that's one of those vegetables on Lisa's not not really happy about list. <laughs> so, you know, when, when you're married, it's all about keeping mama happy. <laughs> you know, every now and then I'll just turn her and say, oh, so you're ordering out tonight. And, and you know, that's that's the only way I can I can calm her down a little bit every now and then. But for the most part, and, you know, she's my best critic. I always I can be serving tons of people, but I look across the table to her to see her reaction because number one, she eats what I make all the time. So uh, she's the, the judge of whether it's okay, it's really good or it's really delicious. So, so I, I know she's not going to be super thrilled with this tonight because of the combination of flavors, but you know, it's still, she'll like the pork. Uh, she won't eat the cranberries. She'll like the pineapple and she, she'll pick around the nuts probably, but you never know. She might surprise me. It is what it is, but I, I right. on a matter, and she uh, she does enjoy them. So that's it for around the kitchen table today. Uh, I mean, that was all that on my induction burner. Yeah, just did it right in front of your eyes in about twenty minutes. Now, like I said, this pork is going to need probably about another ten minutes to cook, but it'll finish tonight when Lisa comes home, and I'll probably just throw it in the oven real briefly, and I'm going to chill this sauce down, and I will. I may serve it cold, too. I may serve this relish cold. It doesn't have to be hot. And uh, make up some roasted potatoes. And and that's it. No, no need to cover it while it's cooking. Induction cooker. Do it on your stovetop. Uh, two pans. Uh, truth be told, you probably didn't even have to cook that pineapple first, saute it first. You could have just mixed everything cold. I just like to bring it together, overheat a little bit because it kind of brings the flavors. It joins the flavors and melts them. The heat activates everything. So, and it was in a good way to put a little butter into it too. So anyway, Excellent. that's it. And tomorrow I'll be here and we will be hitting some uh, turkey leftovers, doing a turkey noodle soup. And I'm also going to make an apple crumble. Uh, oh, man. So, I love it. So, Chef, I'll get Chef, a Chef, can I have a request for future shows? I don't know if you've done this because I might have missed it. Key lime pie? I know. I know. I have to get some key limes. You know, I'll be honest with you. I've never made one. <laughs> but that's never stopped me before. So, Excellent. So, you know, I've, I've been thinking about it. And actually, I was thinking about that this morning, strangely enough, and wondering if I made it 
with a sabayon, kind of like I make uh, tiramisu. Yeah, the sabayon is uh, the, that we love that over here in Italy. I'm gonna have a problem getting the key lime. You might have to ship some over yeah. for me. So you do it first. Okay. That's one of those things that I miss about Florida is key lime pie. Oh, I know, I know. People, I had one of the best ones I had uh, when I was on Cabbage Key. Uh huh. And they served it to me frozen. They served boat desserts frozen. When I said frozen, I'm like, oh, so you don't make them? She goes, well, don't you freeze your ice cream when you make it? And I went, yeah. She goes, well, kind of like, and that was her way of saying, well, shut up. We make it in the house. We just freeze it. <laughs> so, so That's I may good. do that and freeze it and make a nice crust and uh, freeze it and frozen. So if it's not, sometimes when you don't get a dessert that completely sets up the way you would want it to firm up, the best way to do it is to freeze it and make it a frozen pie and you serve it. And as it's you're eating it, it's basically thawing out. Oh, so it's, it's a nice way to get through it. So we'll put that on the list. Great. Everybody's right, saying, uh, yeah, she, um, Peggy's saying key lime pie would be great to see. <laughs> Yeah, and I, the other thing I want to do is I want to make some fresh pastas live. I want to do that. Yeah. Maybe we could get Betty to do that. She would do that. Talk to Betty and see when she we can. would arrive. join you on that, and we would have a lot of fun. Yeah, that's an idea. Yeah, I'd love to see Betty make some some tips, some uh, pasta. Another awesome. great tip is freezing the pie. Absolutely. All right, my friends, that's it for today, and I will see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock uh, for another edition of Around the Kitchen Table. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, everybody. Take care, Chef. Bye-bye.